Okay, well, it's, it's truly a privilege to be introduced and to be part of uh, a panel with, with such distinguished colleagues. Uh, I'm going to present some joint work with Kunal Sen and Sam Volpe, who's joining online. Uh, this is entitled, Waiting on a Miracle, Growth Episodes and the Dynamics of State Fragility. While I won't be speaking about democratization per se, I'll be focusing on fragile states, which of course is one of the themes of, of, of our conference together. As you've already heard our, our speakers note this morning, state fragility is a development problem with one in five people and the majority of the world's extreme poor living in fragile contexts. If we look, if we shift to look at economic growth in fragile states, we can see a couple things. This is looking at the most recent year of economic growth before uh, the coronavirus pandemic. And dividing the world into four quartiles from the most to the least fragile, you can see perhaps not surprisingly, consistent with this narrative of poverty, fragility traps, that the world's most fragile countries have, are growing the slowest. However, that belies substantial differences across countries with both the slowest growing country or the most rapidly um, contracting economy in the world, which in that year was Venezuela, as well as the fastest growing country in the world, which in that year was Libya, being among the most fragile. And while much uh, policy in fragile states, as we learned this morning uh, from our panelists, is around thinking about peace building and conflict resolution and perhaps humanitarian assistance, as all of you who've worked in fragile contexts know, uh, development actors will inevitably turn to a country's growth and development agenda. And our purpose here is trying to understand those dynamics around economic growth in fragile states. Uh, this builds on uh, prior work that Kunal and I have joint with Lant Pritchett. The book on the left, Deals in Development, is based on the premise that the countries we care about do not experience the steady, uh, you know, 2% growth rates of the high-income OECD economies. But rather, in these countries, what matters is growth episodes, where a growth episode is that period of time, maybe 5, 10, 15 years, at which a, a country grows more or less at the same rate, rate of, of, uh, of economic progress. And if you look at countries over time, they tend to go from periods of perhaps growing at, you know, 2% on average per year to 7%, and, and it's our focus to use that as the unit of analysis. And what matters for countries, we found in that uh, research, to avoid uh, bad economic outcomes is to avoid negative growth. It almost seems tautological. But in fact, the rich countries generally don't have those long periods of negative performance. Now, in that book, as well as in subsequent work that Kunal and I did in this guidebook for deals in development in fragile and conflict-affected states, which is through wider, we find and argue that growth episodes can favor or disfavor different political and economic actors. Some growth episodes might lead to broad, inclusive reforms, uh, broader rights in economic uh, and structural transformation, while other episodes preserve narrow, clientelistic, rent-seeking networks. And if we think about these growth episodes in fragile contexts, it has implications for the dynamics of state fragility in these periods of high, medium, or negative growth, which can lead to different investments in state capacity, the prevalence or, or lack thereof of violent non-state actors, and uh, state legitimacy. The research question of this uh, brief presentation is when can or do nations grow out of fragility as an economic growth? And are more rapid growth episodes associated with larger improvements in state fragility? And building on the, the hypotheses that emerged from the prior more historical case-based work, is there good growth and bad growth where state fragility only improves under the right conditions? To do this, we needed to first assemble some new data. Many of you in the room might be familiar with indices of state fragility. But those have two um, weaknesses for us. One is that they're relatively recent. And to look at growth episodes, you have to go back a long time to run the statistical tests to identify changes in growth rates. And the other is that most uh, indices of state fragility include economic growth or the lack thereof collapse as part of the definition of state fragility. So what we needed to do was define a new index of fragility that went back farther and didn't include economic growth. And we did this with VDEM data with five components of state fragility, building on the recent 
International Growth Center report on escaping the fragility trap. And those are the existence of non-state violence, the government lacking legitimacy, the state having weak capacity for essential functions like delivering health, education, and infrastructure, an unattractive private sector environment, and deep societal divisions. And then, having built this index, we uh, looked at countries, we looked at each year of the data and identified the most fragile states in, in every year of the data, and then from that, picked the countries that made that list of most fragile countries the most number of times, which gave us a universe of 35 uh, countries. And then we looked at their whole uh, growth series from 1960, if it was available, and run what's called a biparent test, which statistically identifies growth breaks, which lets us find out when the average rate of growth changes from one growth episode to the next. And then we categorize that into these four uh, categories at the bottom. Uh, from crisis growth, which is really economic contraction of uh, less than negative 1% per year per capita. Stagnant growth, which is around zero. Stable growth between 1% and 5%. And finally, what we label miracle growth, which is referencing the title, uh, greater than 5% per year. And to show you what the data look like, here are a couple examples of two different countries. On the left, we have Angola. The blue line is the log of GDP per capita. And the red line is the fragility index, where a higher number means it's more fragile. And as you can see here, Angola, these, these um, series tend to run in opposite directions from one another. When the economy grows, uh, state fragility decreases and vice versa. On the right, we have a different case, which is Nicaragua. And here, the blue line of GDP per capita tends to actually track the red line of state fragility. And I'll, gi I'll give you an example of a couple growth episodes here to just to try to bring this to a bit, of, uh, uh, a bit of life. In Angola, between 2002 and 2008, the country had recently emerged from civil war. Uh, oil prices were rising and production increased. So this led to large uh, rates of economic growth. And not surprisingly, the level of fragility was reduced during that period. But if we look at the subcomponents of fragility, it was not universal. In fact, there was decreasing legitimacy as well as private sector investment was becoming less attractive during that growth episode. Now contrast this with the episode on the, on the right with Nicaragua in, from around 1978 to 1988. This coincided with the Sandinista revolution, which uh, overthrew the very narrow, uh, narrowly benefiting Samosa uh, regime. And, and then a, a civil war ensued with, with outside a fi financing of that. Now, besides the revolution, the new government imposed a number of reforms that increased access of everyday people to the state. And so even though we have increasing violence, which would have increased the level of fragility, the other indices actually fell, indicating that there was reduced fragility uh, over, this, over this period. Now, in, in, in this chart, we plot each country growth episode on the two dimensions of changes in, in um, economic um, performance and in fragility. And so above the, the horizontal line here are countries that were growing in per capita levels and uh, below uh, shrinking. And then on the left, countries that were decreasing in fragility and on the right, countries that were increasing in fragility. And I've already told you about Angola here which uh, during a period of rapid growth also experienced a rises, uh, or, or rather a reduction in fragility, which might not be too surprising. And on the bottom right, we also see a, another unsurprising quadrant, which is countries that were sh uh, shrinking economically and also experiencing more fragility. You can't quite see it in the mix of, of data points, but Iraq in the 1980s fits in that period where the oil price fell after the 79 uh, oil embargo and Iraq was in a long, uh, uh, a long conflict uh, with Iran. Now on the bottom left, we have the perhaps surprising outcome of countries that despite shrinking their economies were experiencing a reduction in fragility like Nicaragua. And then the top right, also perhaps surprising, uh, we see countries um, that are increasing in fragility despite the presence of rapid economic growth. And I've circled the data point from the Republic of Congo uh, in, the, uh, in the early um, 1980s uh, 
where there was a coup that led to increased uh, fragility, but there was also rising oil revenues. And this builds on observations that we had in our, in our prior work. Now this you will definitely not be able to get through uh, while, while I talk, but basically what we do is we divide all the data points in each of these quadrants and then look at the trends in the components, the subcomponents of state fragility. And let me just share with you a few uh, uh, observations from this data. One, we see that fragility is decreasing more often than it's increasing in the sample. And that decreases in fragility tend to be during high growth episodes and vice versa. But then when we look at the subcomponents, there's, there's some, some, some differences. So state capacity tends to be on a broad secular path of improvement. And state capacity improves. So an improvement here, by the way, is decreasing on any of these variables because a higher score is more fragile. State capacity uh, improves and it only regresses over here during our um, negative growth and fragility increasing episodes. Uh, we also note that non-state violence and government illegitimacy tend to follow fragility rather than growth. So periods of growth are not necessarily associated with improvements uh, of this, uh, and they move along the, the broad uh, trends in, in fragility. And finally, private sector attractiveness and social fragmentation worsen more during high growth episodes than during low growth episodes uh, of, of um, increasing fragility. Now, those were just data points, and we might worry that countries, the same countries always appear in the same, in the same quadrant or some other thing, and I'm not going to presume this is a causal identification here. But what this chart does is it shows the coefficients from regression results where we can control for country fixed effects as well as year fixed effects. So we're basically looking at within a country over time, what is the effect of being in either miracle growth, stable growth, or stagnant growth compared to that baseline of crisis growth? And as we noted earlier, most fragile states do experience uh, crisis growth. The red dot here is the coefficient on fragility. And we can see here, looking at stable growth and stagnant growth compared to uh, uh, crisis growth or collapse, uh, there's very little average change in fragility. But only when we get to miracle growth is there a reduction, but it's not statistically significant. Now, what jumps out as more significant is that when a country is experiencing miracle growth, in other words, greater than 5% per year, um, both state capacity as well as social fragmentation uh, improve relative to uh, periods of, of crisis growth. And we don't see too much on, on stable growth um, or stagnant growth. The exception is, are these green dots up here, which indicate that government le legitimacy actually improves the most under crisis growth compared to any periods of positive growth, perhaps indicating that, you know, that this, this adage of never waste a, a good crisis is true for the re restoration of government legitimacy. Now, in this chart, we divide the sample in a number of different ways. And the idea is to look at different components of, of fragility, recognizing, uh, like Tolstoy said about unhappy families, that not all fragile states are, are, are alike. Um, the left two look at uh, weak state capacity, and the red dot is the more um, fragile countries. In other words, the countries with weaker state capacity, and then the green dot here is, is countries that have um, better state capacity amongst the fragile group. And then this is just the coefficient on, on miracle growth, because it turns out uh, from our last chart is that's where the action is. And as we can see here, um, both for weak state capacity and private sector unattractiveness, it's actually the more fragile half of countries that experiences larger improvements uh, in state fragility or better, better, better outcomes. And we term this the catch-up effect. So it might be that just the mere presence of having rapid economic growth is associated with, a, with improvements if you're, if you're only fragile in those dimensions. But contrast this with the, with the big green uh, dot on the, on the far right, which uh, indicates that amongst countries that are less socially fragmented, in other words, more socially cohesive, a period of miracle growth leads to a reduction in state fragility. Compared to countries there that are more socially fragmented, having miracle growth uh, leads to no change in fragility. And then just to conclude from this, uh, <coughs> 
we can conclude a couple uh, uh, things preliminarily. One is that initiating a more rapid economic growth episode in fragile states is not guaranteed to bring about improvements in fragility. And we saw that miracle growth episodes affect the different components of fragility differently. And finally, not all fragile states are alike, and that miracle growth or rapid growth interacts with differently fragile states in a different way. Thanks.